<clears throat> okay, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Hello. Uh, let's continue <clears throat> with Master Shinoa's instructions. Common phrases such as good morning, good afternoon, good evening, he could manage, but to speak sutra, he couldn't do it. He didn't know Chinese language and need and need a translation. At that time, there was probably none. There was no Chinese who could speak Sanskrit under such circumstances. At that time, he repented and bowed to the Buddhas. He bowed to the Buddhas to request the Buddhas to open his wisdom so he could speak Chinese. He raised such resolve. He bowed and repented for roughly over a year. One day, it was as if he was in samadhi and also as if he were in a dream. He saw a person in white clothes who carried a saber in one hand. In the other hand, he carried a human head. The head had Chinese appearance. Chinese appearance. He told him, he said, What are you worried about? He said, I came from India. Somebody invited me to speak the Avatamsaka Sutra. I don't know Chinese dialect. I don't know Chinese language. Chinese language. So I requested the Buddha's help, just this one. The person in white clothes said, that's no problem. I will change your head for you now. Then you can speak Chinese. Is that all right? Are you willing to? I have this head. So this is end of 23.
他对着脑袋换的，对，换你的脑袋隔天。如果你要认为可以，就可以喽。这个。I will replace this head with yours. Can I cut off your head? If you think it's okay, then it's okay. So this man used this, the saber to cut his head off and replaced it with the one held in, in the hand. He asked, did it hurt? It didn't hurt. I didn't feel the pain. After this, he woke up. After he woke up, not knowing what is going on, he could speak all the Chinese. Thus, he started to lecture the Avatamsaka Sutra. Stop it. Okay, so he uh, was uh, invited to lecture the, on the Avatamsaka Sutra, and there's no translator there. Uh, it's funny because at the time he's uh, in the capital city. I'm pretty sure there must be someone who was very knowledgeable as well, but apparently there wasn't. And being in position power, they could have easily uh, sent people to, uh, to India to get some experts, some specialists. But I guess uh, he chose to handle the problem himself. He says, if I can't speak Chinese, I will have to know how to do it. So he, the lesson here is he says, the reason I can't speak Chinese is because it's a karmic obstruction, karmic obstruction that pertain to lecturing on the Avatamsaka Sutra, which is a very, very difficult thing to do, very uh, moment, uh, monumental undertaking. So, the, so accordingly, the karmic obstructions are just as heavy, you know, as huge. And so that's why he bowed for uh, a year or so before he had a response. Okay, and so that's what it takes. So the concept here is that when we want, when you are about to do something significant, important, especially in Mahayana, you will run to some serious obstructions. Mm -hmm. And like we've been, we've been organizing Chan Chi's uh, for the last uh, over 10 years now, 15 years now. And, and uh, every year, the pressure gets worse and worse and worse. It's not because of me, it's because of you are, are, have been improving, and therefore they have to come and stop you. Hmm? So that's what it is. It's okay. All right, continue, please. Oh, no. 
翻译过来，孔子功德行。要有一个名字，叫什么呢？叫马哈雅。Gunabhadra translates into merits, virtue, and worthy. What was his other name? It was Mahayana. 马哈雅就是大圣。Ah, hmm, Mahayana is Mahayana Dharma. Is Mahayana Dharma? In this Jingzhou area, this Jiaowang is Song. 请他讲《花严经》。In Jingzhou, there was a prime minister of Liu Song Dynasty, Lord Lord Jingzhou. There was a prime minister of Liu Song Dynasty, Lord Lord Jingzhou, who invited him to lecture the Avantamsaka Sutra. 一讲就讲了三年。讲过三年之后啊，这位丞相啊，常常有一种噩梦。Once he started, he spoke for three years. After he taught for three years, this prime minister started to have a type of nightmare frequently. Can you picture that that the Chinese officials would request an Indian monk to explain the Avatamsaka Sutra, uh, and uh, he was doing it uh, year after year after year, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Unless you're an official, you won't have any audience. <laughs> okay, it's very difficult sutra to listen to, and and uh, so uh, it's uh, it's interesting. And that will happen in a royal court, in 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 the among among the officials. Yes. How is it? And nowadays, we, you know, we're struggling. Yeah, yeah thank you, Master. Uh, so, just give some uh, uh, background of uh, ancient China. The, the civil servants, if they are the, uh, the civil officials, not the, say, the generals, they go through this... Uh, official test, so they have to study the four books and the five you know, uh, classics. The classics. So, yeah, so the officials, uh, they, the high ranking, they end up, they tend to be scholars. And so they are the intellectuals, that, that's the, the, the background. So it's very different from nowadays, the officials who barely have uh, primary school education. They may have the intellect and the background, but they don't know enough about Mahayana to really to be able to jump right into the Avatamsaka Sutra. I, I want to say is that at that time, uh, Buddhism in China was held as the highest uh, level of... In the Liu Song Dynasty? Yeah. That's the Nanbei Chao. That's uh, the uh, before the Tang Dynasty. So it's not the Song Dynasty later on after the Tang Dynasty. That's the, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. So people were very well informed. Okay. That's interesting.
Yes, five. Thank you, Master. Uh, just to make sure I, I did hear him say this right, can, can we talk just for a second about the guy in the white robe with the saber who cut his head off and then he got a new head so then he could speak Chinese from a dream? <clears throat> sure, why not? <laughs> so, like, how does that work? How does that work? It's very simple, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is instead of buying Rosetta Stone, you bow in repentance for a year or so. Hmm? You repent full time for a year. And, um, and then uh, hopefully, eventually, one of some of you will have a dream. I will come and say, I need to uh, do a head upgrade. You won't lose anything. Actually, you're gaining. It's an upgrade. Just remember? So you got everything as before, plus now a language skill that you've been praying for. That's how it works. The reason it's interesting to us Buddhists is that when you hear of the so-called miracles or strange happenings or manifestations and so forth in various religions. You know, like uh, people are miraculously, miraculously cured and so forth. And uh, or, um, or strange things. Like, uh, you know, people, people uh, uh, taking a big nail and and punch it through the arm, and blood doesn't even come out in Brazil, of all places, near the Amazon. Things like that, you know, are, are, are what, you know, all the Indians in India, there are lots of strange manifestations, the men levitating. You know, over there, it's a pretty big deal. Levitation is a big deal, okay? So, lots of things like that. It's quite commonplace for a spiritual path to have such manifestations. Okay, so in Buddhism, well, we don't uh, we don't uh, really talk about it. Actually, the Buddha the Buddha prohibited us from displaying spiritual powers. That's what they call spiritual powers. Okay, except for a handful of manifestations. Uh, but the Buddha himself. Uh, did not allow his disciples to um, to display such spiritual penetration, spiritual powers, uh, and so actually for religions it's pretty pretty commonplace. It's quite common. You hear you hear such stories in in Islam, in Christianity, in Judaism, and so forth. Okay, and for us, uh, this is what happened to him, uh, along with. Uh, you know, thousands or millions of such manifestations. Like the people recite uh, the great compassion and repentance. They have all sorts of responses. And that's what it takes in order to build faith. People need responses to believe. So that's how these religions uh, became stronger and take uh, take a hold in the various communities because they got help uh, from the spirits, from uh, the ghosts and the, and the demons of the spirits. For us, we got help from the bodhisattvas. A lot of, for us, uh, the bodhisattvas are uh, actively helping us a lot more than, than, than we talk about. Okay, so basically, uh, this, this particular dream here, and so that's what, how it manifested, the fact that he's been praying and praying and praying, and because of his, uh, the nature of his undertaking is very, very big. That's why he had to overcome rather heavy obstructions. That's why it took so long to repent. Okay, there's a concept here. If you want to do something important, you need to take care of the obstructions. 
So he understood that. He says, the reason I struggle with this is because of my heavy obstructions. And uh, the nature of the obstruction is that when I'm supposed to learn, I can't. <laughs> Just look around you, you see. People may show up, but they not. May, they, the obstruction is so heavy, they can't learn. They doze off, for example. Now, Xian Tung is no longer dozing off because we don't, you know, uh, on your last day of fast, huh? One more day, two more days, you see? Mm. And so, and so, that's typical. The people who learn the Dharma, understand the Dharma and have wisdom, they, they, they're on their toes, they understand that when they are in the midst of a major undertaking, the obstruction will come. And so they have to be on their toes. That's all. And the manifestation here is that basically uh, they uh, magically reward his brains. That's what it took. And for people like Master Xinhua, he was, on a, uh, was faced with a similar, even a bigger task of explaining the whole, I mean, a huge part of Mahayana, just, not just one sutra, but a big part of Mahayana, Chan school, secret school, pure land, you know, and so forth, Vinaya. And, and um, instead of going through one year of repentance here, which he cannot afford to do, okay, uh, he uh, chose to invest the time in training his disciples. He succeeded in doing that. So the way Master Shinwa fixed the problem is by sending his disciples to come to the U.S. first. Okay, to be born here, become pale faces and yellow faces and black faces and red faces, all sorts of faces. And then when he came, somehow they decided to come and support him as monks or lay people. And they learn, uh, they learn, their, they speak the language already, so all they have to do is learn the Dharma and learn Chinese. And men, many of them picked up the language pretty fast, okay? Uh, either they came already knowledgeable about, uh, by, uh, as bilingual, or uh, the early ones would learn, pick up Chinese very, very fast. And, uh, and Master Xinhua said some of them were Chinese in a prior life, so that helps. So there are different ways of, of um, solving the problem. You know, so this guy here, Gunabhadra, he solved the problem by repentance because it's a smaller scale. Master Shiho solved the problem by sending his disciples uh, first to the United States to be born here. Okay, or when Bodhidharma uh, brought the Dharma from India to China, before doing that, he sent two of his disciples, two Indian guys, two Indian masters, to travel the country to generate enthusiasm and pave the way for Bodhidharma to come. And their plans are different. Their plans is only to transmit the Chan Dharma door. So, hmm? so each, each generation have their own, their own um, approach to solve the obstructions. Yes, sir? Five? Thank you, Master. I, I really appreciate your explanation. And I just want to express my thankfulness to Great Master Shenhua for his incomprehensible effort. And I just think it's so powerful when he shares stories like that dream. Uh, you know, for my Western mind, it's stories like that that really uh, impact my imagination and really open me to thinking and receiving 
Buddhism in the in a way that feels good. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's, it's not just that. Uh, it's also because of your participation that uh, is actually making this becoming better and better and stronger and stronger. When we first started, it's uh, only a handful of people. Now we have a whole network of you know, sophisticated tools and, and equipment and investments that we're still investing into more and more and more okay, to make the Dharma more appealing, more uh, multi-dimensional, and so that we can allow more people to, to participate and and uh, it it's uh, it, it's uh, to me I'm very grateful for all of you to make the effort to come every night and to tune in and participate and it's a real pleasure to me I don't I don't know because I'm grateful because I'm learning too from the great master I never learned he never taught me much he taught me about a few times and that's it five times maximum, okay? And the rest of it is I didn't have the blessings to learn directly from him. So for me, to me, this is an opportunity for me to learn directly from him in a way as well, okay? And so I really appreciate this. To me, you know, every night is a big deal. You know, it doesn't matter how tired I am or how, you know, whatever it is or how full I am or how sleepy I am. When the time comes, I wake up, and nothing can stop me. No obstruction can stop me. See? And because, of, because, of, because, because this Dharma is this incredible. You don't realize how, how, how wonderful, how priceless this really is. Let me assure you, you will not find a better child teacher in your lifetime, for a long, long time, in you know, many more generations, who will not find a, a master, a teacher as, as, uh, as big as Master Shenhua. It's very much like when they transmitted the Dharma to China, Bodhidharma had to come. Now it's transmitted to the U.S., okay? Master Shenhua was sent here because he's that talented, okay? And, and uh, I'm, I feel very, very fortunate in that you all have been very supportive so that we are able to promote this Dharma here, make it available to more people in, in, you know, freely uh, and uh, study it. And, and uh, so to me, it's such, such, a, such a treat to be able to do this every night. Okay? Uh, and 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 uh, nothing can stop me at all. They have to kill me first. Anyway, any other questions? And because of you, if you didn't come, I wouldn't have to do this. And the more and more people you coming, of course, as you said, uh, the important internet people as well. How many are there tonight, for example? <laughs> I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the nearly 50 people we have watching across our English, Korean, Chinese, and Vietnamese YouTube channels at the moment, Master. I see. Okay. Well, continue. Try being, should begin to be more controversial and start criticizing our... Yes, six. Uh -huh. First of all, thank you, Master. Um, since I came to the Way Mountain Temple, it's at the end, the end of the December of 1999. So at the, from that time, and I always looking for the stay the temple for join the Chanchi or Pochi, but my obstruction is so big, so I can. But finally. <laughs> For just a few days, I can join the Chanchen this weekend. So this weekend, yeah. Wow! I, I, first, I, I feel kind of I was feel lonely wow. because I saw the 
Grey Mountain Temple, there is no people, so Master is so good. Not so loud. <laughs> Best is in the the north North California. So, but anyway, I feel I'm very ha happy for you coming down to <laughs> South, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm so happy my husband going to Korea. Korea. Day morning. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so I can join. Uh, that this weekend and next weekend. Next weekend too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Thank wow. you so much, Mr. Oh, that's great. Yeah. 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 That's, that's typical, by the way. You cannot take this for granted because it's so difficult to do one day. It's just typically, I'm told, I don't know how true it is, I'm told that for most of us, it takes. Uh, in our schedule, uh, it, we work the entire year so that we can do uh, the year-end cheese. And most of us are not allowed to participate fully, even. So we, because we still have to open the temple and there's still things happening around the temple. But typically, uh, the Chan Chi is such a big, big deal. Uh, that that uh, we prepare for the entire year, okay, uh, just for the Chan Chi. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, for me, when I was there for four years, I hated it. Okay, uh, so, so for you to be able to do one day or two days, it's just an incredible, incredible deal, trust me. The, the, the benefits you get out of it are just inconceivable. You know, uh, once you realize that, hmm, then you appreciate it more and you will never allow anyone to distract you from listening live to the words of the great masters. If you have any real skills at all, like you've been trained, then you should be able to do it. Continue. He asked Dharma Master Mahayana the reason why. Mahayana told him that he is afraid that within a year there will be a rebellion in the Song, Di Song Liu Song Dynasty. Moni is somebody planning to rebel. Sure enough, within a year, in the Liu Song dynasty, it happened once that somebody rebelled. Later, this prime minister himself wanted to be the emperor, 
So he himself also wanted to stage a co-op, coop, 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 a coup, coup, a coup. Okay. The French is coup. Coup. But the 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 American call it a coup. A coup. <laughs> a coup. <laughs> uh, a coup. Oh. Very close to the French. Yeah. <clears throat> During the rebellion period, Mahayana merits virtue worthy Chan Master looked worried. He had a very, very worried look, but he said nothing. Then the Prime Minister, Lord Zhao asked him, he questioned. He said, Mahayana, you're a cultivator. Lately, why you look so worried? So Chan Master Merits Worthy cried his eyes out and advised the Prime Minister to not rebel. He said that you will not succeed in your rebellion, but the Prime Minister didn't listen to him and insisted on rebelling. Not only did he insist on rebelling, he brought the Dharma Master along. Why did he bring Dharma Master along? Because ordinary people believed in Chan Master Mahayana a lot. If he stayed in the army, ordinary soldiers and commoners will all believe the rebellion will succeed. Thus, they went together. From Jingzhou to Nanjing, they passed by a place called Liang Mountain, and the two armies fought there. Uh, 
作战呢，这个、战争一发生，两军一战争起来了，那么这个消亡啊，这个兵就都战败，战败在这。Once they went into combat, once the war broke out, once the two armies started fighting, the Lord Chao's army lost. They lost. At that time, in the river, in the Yanzi River. His boat was very, very far away from shore. Ah, this Wei Fa Shi, you think, will definitely will be the soldiers, right? The Starma master thought he would for sure be killed by the soldiers. So he held a bamboo stick. He held a bamboo stick and jumped into the river. He jumped, jumped into the river, and the water was only to his knee level. But when he sticked the bamboo stick inside the water to test, 不上就够不着底，够不着，到到不了水底。The bamboo stick can reach the bottom. It can't reach the bottom. It can't reach the bottom under the water. 那么这个时候离这个两岸也很远。At that time, he was very far away from both shores. He thought for sure he would die. Although the water was only at knee level, but he was too far away from the river bank to cross the river. Exactly at that moment, a, a little child came from behind. This little child was about seven, eight, or twelve years old. The little child pulled him, pulled him to walk forward. He said, You little child, how can you cross me? As he was speaking, he felt that he walked over a dozen steps, walked over a dozen steps, and arrived at the river bank. Uh, 
送给那个小孩子，来谢谢那个小孩子。He arrived at the river bank and wanted to take off his clothes to get. To give to the little child as appreciation. But after he took it off and took a look, the little child has disappeared. He didn't know where the little child went. 因为在那江里头啊，就一心常念观世音菩萨。At that time, he knew it was because he single-heartedly recited Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva's name in the river. 这一定是观世音菩萨派这个善财童子来救。It must be Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva sent good wealthy youths to save him, to get over this dangerous situation. Although he arrived at the river bank. But there were still soldiers on the other side of the shore, so he was caught by the soldiers. During the Shizhu period of Liu Song, when the army was sent to quell Lord Zhao, the emperor already instructed the army. So, you, no matter who, if you want to get the Mohoyan Tanshi, you must be very careful. Be careful. Ah, get him to the jungle. He said that no matter who gets Chan Master Mahayana, you must treat him well and send him to the capital. Now they caught him, so they sent him to meet with the emperor of Liu Song. At the time, emperor summoned him to spoke to him. So I, ah, 仰慕你很久很久了，啊，我很想啊见一见你。He said. I have admired you for very, very long time, and I always wanted to meet with you. But the conditions were not ready. Until today, the conditions were ripe, and I finally get to meet with you. 摩诃衍说：“我这个是一种业缘呢，才遇到这么个情形。这现在皇帝你不杀我，我已经呢就非常的感感激了。” Mahayana said, "I have this karmic condition to encounter this situation. Now your highness will not execute me. I am very grateful." 皇帝呀，就把他送到
齐桓寺去他那住，就供养他很丰厚，很丰厚啊。So the emperor sent him to live in Qi Huan Temple and made very generous, very generous offerings to him. 常常在这皇宫里面呢，请他吃斋供养。The emperor often invited him to vegetarian meal offerings inside the palace. 一般的这个做官的也都皈依的。Officials all took refuge with him. They bowed Chan Master Merit's worthy as their master. Okay, stop. Okay, so any questions, comments? Chinese thing. Yes, wife. <clears throat> Thank you, Master. I feel like this is there's some really practical lessons here. Um, my first my, pray share with us. <laughs> uh, my my first takeaway is, if you're ever planning a coup or a rebellion, definitely get a monk to go with you. Yeah, no, definitely don't. Don't get a monk. Definitely do not bring a Chan master with you. <laughs> they'll only pour poison in your ear, and when you're defeated, they'll run away and kowtow to your enemies without even a kind word in your favor. <laughs> uh, Takeaway hey. two okay. is if you are, yeah, on just... the other hand, if you're Darth Vader or Emperor Palpatine, and the, rebe and the rebels have a Chan master on their side, uh -huh. that's a really good sign that you're going to win. You're going to win, and, definitely, and you yes. You can easily bring the Chan master over with vegetarian no, food. No, 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 it has to be Indian Chan master. <laughs> Okay, you're missing out a very important detail. Very important detail. If it were in Chinese, it wouldn't be the case. <laughs> so I, I feel like this is really practical advice, and I'm going to keep it in mind. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Anyone else? There's some, there's some uh, meaning to this, for sure. Yes. Anyone else? Hmm? That's it? That's all you have? That's all you Asians have? I have to count on the pale faces to, for the, the, to learn the lesson from this, and you uh, Asian faces are? are there, eh, I heard it before. What's a big deal? Huh? Yes, five. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, Master. Maybe Jane or somebody else can shed some light. I, I guess, like you know, the, the ask uh, something about uh, China. She'll chime in. Yeah, and yeah. it has to be direct. You have to know what ticks, you know, what what uh, tickles her. The the detail that was missing for me is why. Sorry, is it Prime Minister or Lord Chow? What? Why was he rebelling? Like, what, what set him off? What was his motivation? Oh, I'm sure she'll look it up. <laughs> he, he wanted to be the emperor himself. H had the emperor slighted him or no, provoked him no. in some you way? you don't understand the Chinese mentality. Go ahead, China person. Uh, oh, th this, this guy is uh, historically... Uh, from this uh, prominent family, and so, so in in China traditionally, the emperor for a while, you know, and your underlings, you know, stage a coup d'état, and then you get taken over. But that's not just China; it's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yes. Yeah. It's the fate of an emperor is to have your underlings try to overthrow you. Mm, happened repeatedly in China, and that's why, you know, emperors come and go. 
Yes, nine. Uh, thank you, Master. A couple of things that struck me was I feel sort of sad because Lord, I'm not sure I pronounced it. Yao. Yao and his underlings that were taught the Avatamsaka for how many years? And, all and then he decided people. to overthrow them. And they're probably all dead. To kill a bunch of people. And then the second thing I'm impressed with is when he was uh, caught by, on the other side, he didn't explain his position. Yeah, he came and said, hey, I'm, I'm so grateful you spared my life. Now, now I'm siding with you. <laughs> what kind of child master is that? It, it bothers me. I don't know because I'm not Chinese. Okay, I, I'm not Chinese. Okay, so I don't understand this mentality. I'm not Indian either. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this. How could you? How could you go from switch sides just like that? Because they spare your life. What about, what about, you know, hey, I'm going to die with my boss. How about loyalty? Huh? Uh, yes, in the back. Master, uh, throughout this story, I feel like he's not even a fourth state our head. I don't know if I, my observation is wrong because I feel like he's still afraid of die. Yeah, I guess. I don't know who he is. I don't care even. Yeah, this, uh, uh, go ahead, DDT. I'm just curious as to why, why is he telling us this story about this guy is supposed to be an eminent monk? And I say, okay, this is, is an Indian Chinese eminent monk. It's in the record books. Why? Why is he there? I'm trying to understand here. Because I don't get it. Go ahead, DTT. This is when I wish I were Chinese or Indian or something. It might make sense to you. Master, could I ask you a question? Sure. In a while back, uh, the Master Chan taught the general the sutra for three years. And after that, the general have nightmares. Is listening to the sutra and having nightmare have anything to do with each other? Or it just without listening to the sutra, could he still have nightmare? Or because of the sutra, he has night nightmares? That part I don't understand. Yeah, I, I don't understand either. But, uh, uh, but it just happens. There's many reasons. Don't try to understand everything, okay? The story that is related to us is that, oh, he had nightmares. And so it's impending. It means nightmares mean impending bad things, okay? Uh, so he has some, some bad energy, whether it's coming or in the past, we don't know, okay? Uh, nightmares, uh, when you talk about nightmares, uh, if, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult to try to pinpoint the reason, okay? And uh, uh, it's about what do you make of it? Either you resolve it, you know, if recurring nightmares, this monk here, who is his master, should have been able to resolve it for him, but he didn't. Okay, maybe the Indian uh, monks are used to nightmares. I don't get it. But, you know, usually when, when it is it's a chow, the chow, duk uh, chow, you know, or this, this, uh, this prime minister chow, He's a big shot. He's very powerful. So if he's had nightmares, usually they say, hey, fix it for me, man. I'm, I'm the prime minister. You can't fix it for me. I cut your head off. Good, competent. I've been supporting you all these years. And you can't even, you talk, you talk, 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 talk about the profound principles of Avatam Saka Sutra. You can't even fix my nightmare. <laughs> you all talk. I need some concrete things. I'm feeding you every day. You can't even fix my nightmare. 
That's the real problem. Can't even convince his Dharma protector not to go to war. And this, the other problem I also have yeah, among the, the, the many problems I'm sure many of you have as well is that the guy, this, uh, this uh, Prime Minister Tiao says, I want you to go with me, to war with me, because with you by my side, my soldiers will, will obey me, okay, will go uh, to go to extreme for me because of you. And that's the case. He should have cut him his own head off. He said, I'm going to go back to the other old head. Okay? Because I would be responsible for so much misery and suffering in this country who's been nurturing me, who's been feeding me, he's been good to me. And now you put him in position to impose a lot of pain and suffering to many, many people. How can I, can I live like that? How can I possibly let it happen since I've been the beneficiary of all the good things this, the people this country gave me? What you gave me is from the taxes they could, you collected from your people. Okay? They have to suffer for it. So I owe you and I owe your people as well. So how can I possibly participate in this thing here where I'm going to harm the people who have been feeding me. Especially since I know you're not going to succeed. If you were the case, I, let me ask you Koreans, what would you do? Can I suggest something? Like you cut your own head off and say, you know what? Instead of going to war like this and inflicting a lot of pain, let me cut my head off. To show appreciation what you've done for me. Hmm? Maybe it will stop this uh, this Jiao uh, Prime Minister from rebelling. I'd rather die than let a lot of people die because I know he's not going to succeed either. It may even put uh, you know the words where my mouth is. Hmm? I don't understand this guy. What about the principles? Buddhism is about principles, profound principles. And you can't even control your own obstructions. What good are you? What can you teach? that would carry any weight at all. And sure enough, after, you know, he, he, uh, the, the water is so shallow, barely knee deep, and he's afraid to drown? <laughs> Seriously? Huh? He's afraid to drown when the water is up to knee deep. <laughs> I had to call Wan Yin for help. And I immediately changed camps. I mean, at least I would say, torture me, please torture me. Let me at least show to you I'm repentant. So he took the, the good stuff from this guy when he loses, when he, he gets it, when he loses, he switch cam immediately and say, hey, now I'm your side. We're friends, aren't we? Let's do big things together. Oh, what kind of monk is that? What kind of bosom do you think he's teaching? Yes, five. 
Thank you, Master. I, I might get in big trouble for saying this, but, uh, you know, I don't think you could fault somebody for saying in the story that Mahayana is climbing on conditions. <laughs> on the flip side of my earlier, um, of my earlier practical takeaways, though, Great Master Shenhua breezed past it so fast. It wasn't until you were you were discussing some of the other goings ons. And to to uh, to Jim's point, Venerable Mahayana was lecturing for three years on the Avatamsaka Sutra, and it, I think to me it just kind of implies he became the good knowing advisor to uh, Lord. Uh, Prime Minister Chow, and then Prime Minister Chow blatantly did not listen to his good knowing advisor when he told him, hey. It's not his good no advisor. Well, that, that was. That's, that's the point. Yeah. That's the rub. He right? just said, you know, I like, I like, uh, I like what you say, but uh, uh, continue to entertain me. I'm using you to go to war eventually. The one thing you guys forgot is that this guy is a Tripitaka master, isn't he? Is he the, that monk or the other one? He's a Tripitaka, right? He's a Tripitaka master, meaning he understands the precepts. And what does he do? Killing a lot of people. For us, it's a huge, huge precept to kill, to engage in the killing karma. If he allows the, the Duke Jiao, the Prime Minister Jiao, to use him to motivate his, the army to kill others, his hands are bloody too. He should know that. And he's a Tripitaka master. He understands the, the Vinaya. I don't think he really understands. Yes, no, seven. Thank you, Master. So it makes you really wonder why is Great Master Shinwa talking about him? What is the story he's really going to point out? What is the summary of, of what he's going to really say? Why are we learning about this guy who isn't really um, a good monk and holding up the precepts? Why are we learning about him? Why do you use my teaching against me? <laughs> yes, a Taiwanese person, eight. I remember the point was he was a stupid and became very smart. Is this a guy? Yeah. I don't remember <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> he became smart. So actually, he never became smart. That's what it sounds like. I I don't know, maybe... Yeah, he was pretty stupid from an external <laughs> family, and then he, he went to Buddhism, and he learned Tripitaka, okay, and he read the Nirvana Sutra, and he became enlightened, just like that. And then he, he became a Tripitaka master, and then he went around and he abandoned his Indian people who fed him, who allowed him to become a Tripitaka master, and he abandoned them and then went to China. And then he went to China, he banned one Chinese guy after another, after another, after another. This guy has a problem with loyalty thing. And Master, is this the one who um, drew straw? He drew the straw that's... Yeah, in yeah, to learn Sutra. about the Avatar Sutra. Is this what happens? Is this what's showing us that this is what happens when you just pull a straw and, oh, this is what I'm going to study? Yeah, so don't trust people who come from Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they gamble with their lives, huh? Okay, anyway, it has nothing to do with Vegas. Uh, um, so why is he, why is Master Master Shion talking about him? I don't know, maybe eventually we get, we get the point. But so far, it's uh, one lesson I have is that, I've learned is that uh, I don't want to be like this guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it's just when you receive things, support, it, it comes with conditions. 
then what does it mean? When someone gives you, supports you, and expects something out of you, what does it mean? You are climbing on conditions. Is, you, can, can you see how beautiful Master Sri Nuhar's teaching is? He says, every night, every morning, every evening, we first thing, uh, you know, Dong Su, Wu Pan Yuan. The first thing. Now you understand why. To me, this is one of the reasons to me that, that, that brings to light this beautiful teaching he's left us. That this guy didn't have. Because to me, this is the first thing to me is shocking. You know, to let someone make offerings to you and then manipulate you to their ends, their evil ends. It's not like this, this uh, Prime Minister Chow would want to become, to become an emperor because the emperor is bad or something. The current emperor seems a pretty decent guy, forgiving, huh? respectful, appreciative of the monks and nuns. It's not like he's bloodthirsty or anything. So, you know, it sort of makes me wonder why this guy hang out with uh, Prime Minister Xiao. If, if, if someone gives you money and you don't like this person, you don't have to take it. Return it. We don't have to take it. But this guy swears. He knows he's a pretty bad guy. He's worried about it for a long time. He couldn't, he couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat because he knows that he's going to lose, he's going to be in danger. What's an uncool thing? That you're a monk and you're worried day and night that you know, you're going to be, bad things are going to happen to you. To the point where you know, he look worried. And he's supposed to be a Chan master. Chan master should have no worries. There's so many contradictions in this story. What kind of Chan is he teaching? Yes, five. Thank you, master. We have a YouTube comment from He Fang. Yes. Uh, going back to the motivation for the prime minister's nightmares. Um, he Fang says, I think since this prime minister had the merit and virtue of inviting the master to teach the sutra, that's why the prime minister got this nightmare as a prediction or advice from some superpower about his rebellion. Could be, could very well be, or could not. We don't know. We really don't know. So it's, it's not advisable for you to try to interpret it unless you're making money of it, then I have no problems. That's not indulge in trying to interpret things that we don't know just because we can rationalize it, okay? It doesn't matter at all, whatever the reasons, okay? Uh, uh, it could be so many aspects of it. it is, is there so many causes for those nightmares, there's no, you know, it's, is not productive to try to determine the real cause for it, okay? And, and to me, what, what, uh, what, uh, what uh, stands out is that this guy, his sponsor has nightmares, couldn't even fix his nightmares. These guys all talk. It should be one of the simplest things to do is fix someone else's nightmare. Yes, uh, five. Thank you, Master. You know, with every, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of ins and outs in this story. Um, and in my, in my heart, I want to give uh, uh, the, the, the venerable, great, worthy Mahayana, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt um, because... There, there's a there's a perspective that I have that you know he's kind of taking things as they come as well. He, he certainly doesn't appear to be proactive from the way Great Master Shenhua is describing him, but I mean he is lecturing the Avatamsaka Sutra in China where it's like brand new stuff. Like this is uncharted territory in so many ways. So I just I kind of want to I still want to give him the benefit of the doubt. 
Yeah, of course. Uh, he he's, he's really is a worthy one, as his name indicates. He's a really uh, a special monk, uh, and and uh, he's uh, has uh, tremendous credentials to be named the Tripitaka Master. Okay, uh, he's recognized as Tripitaka, Tripitaka Master in India. I mean, he's pretty impressive. Yeah, very few people can do that have that kind of distinction, receive that kind of distinction, have that kind of honor. So he, he, he's, he's no, no ordinary person, that's for sure. Yes, too. Thank you, Master. Uh, what struck me in the story was uh, how little faith it seemed he had uh, when he was on the boat. Uh, he like uh, he's scared out of his wits. He's dipping dipping the bamboo stick into the river before he jumps, and then uh, when the little child comes to save him, he's like, "What's happening? What's happening?" Uh, but then you learn he recited Guanyin single heartedly. Is it? Uh, what are we supposed to learn from that? What you should learn is that when you're in trouble, recite Guanyin because it, it worked for him as well. If it worked for him, it's gonna work for you. That's all. And as I said uh, last night or the night before, uh, be keep Wan Yin's name in mind so that when you're in trouble, okay, instead of giving up, and, you, and you, if, if you're about to die, your last thought will be, Wan Yin, please help me. If it's the last thing you do before you die, you say, Wan Yin, please help. That's all. And you see the miracles. I'm telling you, it works. A very powerful, uh, powerful Dharma door that's not being conveyed to you here, the way the Chinese tell the stories. Because they don't really spell out for you why it worked in some cases and, and why it would not work in other cases. I'm pointing it out to you. Because, because you understand the, the essence, this Dharma door is that you have to be sincere. And to be sincere requires you, since you are not trained, you don't have the Chan skills, is that you're at, your, at the moment where you are in great danger and there's nothing, no, no way out, call one yin. That's when she'll come. That's all you need to know. When you, when someone is about to harm you, don't call me, don't call Master Shenhua, okay? It's not going to work, <laughs> okay? When you call Wan Yin, to the point where they're about to kill you, take a knife and go like this, okay? You see it, it's coming towards your throat, you know you're going to die, right? You decide Wan Yin, it will break. Have that faith. Don't say, oh, would, would, would it work? <laughs> I said, you want to say so? I hope it works. <laughs> no, don't forget, don't, don't, don't quote me, <laughs> please. <laughs> it's the wrong time to quote me, okay? Just have faith. I want you to know that this is so important. This is, I don't care what you learn from me, learn this, okay? Ingraining in your psyche, your, your psyche forever is going to serve you the rest of your, your, uh, your, your uh, wandering in the samsara. Okay? If you still choose to do so. Yes, nine. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, I, I was kind of going towards uh, Peter's point about not really passing judgment on, on this monk because... I mean, the amount of grace surrounding this guy is incredible. That he he repents, he he learns Chinese, which is an, is an amazing miracle. Uh, he uh, is is uh, getting in trouble on the river and calls out Guan Yin, and this kid shows up and helps him across. Uh, he you know this war is occurring now. He goes to the other side and gets captured, and and he kind of says. Uh, I knew that, almost like I knew this was going to happen. This was a karmic situation I, I had to go through. So I'm wondering, like, okay, so when did he know this? Like, was if, he just kind of going with the plan? 
and then he, he doesn't get his head chopped off, which again, I mean, that's... He, he's all talk. That's how I see it. He says, I'm, you know, emperor. You know what? I have this karmic condition. That's why I, had, I was over there. But now it's, it's finally my good things. I'm mature. I'm with you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my God. I mean, to me, it's so wishy-washy. It sounds just like me. <laughs> One day I'm with you. Next day, ah, hey, I'm out of here. When I, last night, I'm in North, Northern California. Tonight, I'm here with you. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it, to me, it's disgusting. I mean, uh, I mean <laughs> you see, you look at the story as, as the sister says. It has so many holes. I don't know why Master Shiro told his story. That's why I can't wait to the end of this to find out, is there a lesson here or something? Because so far, would not be a bad way to go. So far, what I learned. <laughs> Master Shion will not judge you. This is how you behave, you know? And yes, five. Uh, th th thank you, Master. And, 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 I, and I, I absolutely uh, see the wisdom in, in your perspective that he's all talk. Um, and, and when you're mentioning that, for, for whatever reason, it came to mind something, a concept that we covered, I can't remember if it was weeks or months ago at this point, but could it be that uh, Venerable uh, Great Worthy Mahayana is, is also cultivating the path of non-obstruction? Could be. I don't know. I don't care to comment about He's not that. getting in anyone's way, you know, it's just... He's just kind of getting carried along, and a, a grand temple is at the end of this amazing rainbow of things happening. Like, you know, he obstructed no one. He only taught the sutra and then was taken to war and then asked for help, got across the river with a baby's arm dragging him, and the soldiers were like, I had to be saved by a baby. Come on, man. <laughs> At least send, send a general or a diver, come and save me, something. I'd be offended. I mean, Jesus, Wan Yin, you send a baby to save me? How am I going to tell my, my students? I was in trouble when Wan Yin sent a child to save me. I couldn't even save myself. I mean, what would people think? What would the Americans think later? <laughs> <laughs> it's fascinating to me. Does it bother you? I mean, I said, let me die, man. I'm not going to be saved by you. <laughs> yes, five. Thank, thank you, Master. We have, a, we have a YouTube comment from Jesus. Uh, Jesus says, for me, it is weird that Lord Chow believes so much in Buddhism. I know. <laughs> After that, I, I said, I'm going to switch to Catholicism. <laughs> and, and At least they have nice choirs. <laughs> and Jesus continues. He says, uh, it, it's weird that Lord Chow believes so much in Buddhism, but didn't consider the not killing precept and went to war. Yeah, he learned nothing from this guy. He's only using this guy. That's what Lord Chiao, to me, what he's doing. But what, what's deplorable to me is that this Indian guy let him in the name of propagation of Buddhism. That, to me, is a terrible thing to do. They say, hey, I, I'd rather be saved by a child than die so that I can continue to propagate my Buddhism, my Mahayana. It, the more you talk about it, the more, you know, it doesn't make sense. If, if he's like, he's like, you know, if he's like a, like a, a regular monk who has aspiration, who went there long and so forth, and he's not even a Chan master, I applaud him. He's going against the odds to do things that he's not qualified to do. But he, this is a, 
This is a high level sangan. You know, and he says, I'm a Chan master, I propagate Chan. And then he lets himself worry to death that it's gonna, bad things are going to happen to him. Because he's going to be caught in this rebellion against his wishes. <sighs> Seriously? <laughs> As to quote this famous uh, tennis player, John McEnroe, he can't be serious. <laughs> My God. <clears throat> if this is the case, I'd rather fall asleep. I mean, I feel bad. I'm trying to stay awake the whole time now. Uh, yes, anyone else? Shall we continue to get the end of it? Is there a moral of the story here? Or what? <laughs> continue. Let's get to the end of it before we, we lose interest. At least he could have said, you know, hey, emperor, I'm fasting. You know what I mean? Not today. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I mean, our people are fasting. My students are fasting. How could you possibly go to your feast? He has no shame, no remorse whatsoever. Shameless. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, eight. Oh, I can read the English now. Oh, yeah, yeah, go read <laughs> One time, the emperor invited him to the palace to make offering again. Because of time constraint, he didn't shave his beard or hair. Okay. I can see that. The razor, not very sharp back then, so it takes an hour. <laughs> Continue. His <laughs> His hair were all white and his beard were all white as well. As he arrived in the palace, the emperor said to the officials, he said, Mahayana's wisdom and eloquence is incomparable, and he is also good at understanding others. Whatever you ask him, he will for sure answer you cleverly. Now that I'm going to ask him a question and see how he answers. So the emperor and the officials welcomed him. The emperor said, he said, Mohayan, 
唯有一件事情存在，就有一件一样事情存在。Mahayana, Mahayana, you came from far away, but now there's only one thing exists. Only one thing exists. The emperor did say what that one thing was. The emperor didn't say what that one thing was. The Dharma master said, he said. O monk came from very far away to draw near the emperor. It has been thirty years. It has been thirty years. I don't have anything left except death. Only death exists. The emperor heard him say so. Originally, the emperor also said that the only also said that only one exists, which means only death exists. So when Dharma Master Mahayana answered as such. The emperor was very happy, so he asked Mahayana to sit beside him, to sit beside the emperor. Oh, the officials were happy as well. They all paid special attention to Dharma Master Mahayana. Yeah, it's not. I think we have liberal time. Let's discuss this story here. I don't want to go back to the slides. I'm lazy tonight for some reason. Uh, so what do you think of the story here? The emperor, how he invited him to the feast, and he didn't have time, so he came bearded and with white hair and everything. Uh, I'm impressed he's not bald. <laughs> OK, anyway. Uh, he's old. I mean. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? So I'm impressed. He's oh, he came with the white beard, and you know, um, and 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 uh, and uh, yeah, uh, but anyway, so be it. So he, he ate, and then and then and then the emperor says, "I'm going to ask you a question," and uh, so he says, uh, "What is one thing left? What does it mean to you? One thing left?" And then he says, uh, the answer is death. And he's so happy, the emperor's so happy. Sit next to me, boy. I mean, uh, <laughs> and, he, and he immediately came sitting and sat next to the emperor. And everyone, oh. 
What I really, really is really a comedy, I think, more like a Buddhist comedy. Huh? I mean, like, you know, a traitor, a monk, and, you know, uh, kissing up now to the emperor. And he doesn't shave as a daily practice. He had no, didn't have to do chan chi, clearly. Every night, lecture every night. <laughs> yes, sir, in the back, two. Thank you, Master. Uh, it seems like it would be child's play for him, a guy who knows the future, to read the emperor's mind and know what he wants to say to him. So it doesn't seem very impressive at all and very easy to get close to the emperor. Yeah, this emperor, I don't know what kind of emperor this guy is. <laughs> He's so easily impressed. <laughs> yes, five. Uh, thank you, Master, for, you know, with the description of him not shaving his head, uh, for some reason I'm, I'm envisioning the character, the, the unshaven monk from Kung Fu Hustle, but like a lot older. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, it's a fantastic No, I haven't movie. seen it. I only remember the, uh, the panda. I only saw that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Kung Fu Panda. It's kind of... It, it's not the same? I th always thought it was the same thing. Never mind, continue, sorry. It follows the story of a Buddhist monk demon hunter, and then shenanigans... Anyways. Um, I'll make sure I watch it. Highly Is recommend. Is it available on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I I I it seems to get me that a like donation for a ticket. You, there's different places you can I can get into where you can stream it if Yeah, uh, never mind. Get, can you, let's not get sidetracked. <laughs> it's important things we need to discuss here. I, th I think I was watching it on Amazon Prime, but I'll get back to you. Uh -huh. Um it seems like history is repeating itself where uh the Dharma master comes to now to an emperor before it was the the lord and cozies up next to him and says all the right things yeah. and kowtows and receives adulations yeah and it's just like not, it's just very you know come here let me let me stroke your head you know hey come here good boy good boy good boy allows himself to be presented as like a totem or a, just simply a, a shiny you know trophy to be he, he kisses utilized. up he kisses up to all these powerful people you know, climbs on conditions totally Right? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so obvious. This guy is a brown noser. I mean, he kisses up to his, his bosses. It's so remarkable. Yes, sir, in the back. Master, it just reminded me how opposite that is with Venerable Hoi Nang when uh, was invited by the emperor, Venerable Hoi Nang, just denying it. All, all the time, and this guy even don't have time. They have to count out to the emperor, and he ran right immediately without even shaving his head. Yeah, well, yeah it's not easy to deal with the emperor. Anyway, I deal with so many emperors here. Um, um, let's go back to a point here. If you were asked, what is that one thing? What is your answer? I'm curious, because this guy says death. What is your answer? I'm curious, okay? I'm very curious as to your wisdom. Wake up, everyone. Give me an answer. What is one thing left? That now I'm, I'm interested, because so far, <laughs> why are we listening to this again? Yes, nine. The one thing left is to cultivate. Cultivate. Anyone else? Quickly, quickly, let's go through. You don't need to explain. Okay? If you say that, I wonder what the, how the emperor would react. Seven. Quickly. Enlightenment. Enlightenment. Not, not? Cultivation. Cultivation. Anyone else? DTT. Oh. Oh. Ho? Ho, ho, ho? <laughs> okay, I accept that. Anyone else? I'd say nothing. Nothing. 
Hmm, I like it. It's slightly better. Anyone else? Nine. Buddha nature. Buddha nature. DTT. Hmm? It's nothing. 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 Meaning. Okay. Anyone else? Come on, this is your time, your chance to, to kiss up to the emperor. <laughs> well, what you say? I'm serious. I mean, this is your chance to, to, to sit next to the emperor. Yes, too. In samsara suffering. One thing? Suffering. Suffering, okay. Anyone else? Huh? Mama, what's one thing? Lunch. <laughs> Anyone else? Daniel. What happened to Daniel? Is he listening? For Daniel's apple. <laughs> Anyone else? Five. Uh, from YouTube, uh, super apologies. Chen Yen Vo says the ego. The ego. And okay. Then, uh, Daniel, who was listening, uh, for me, the last thing left is God. He's God, of course. Good points. Okay. And yes, sir, in the back. Master, I just want to correct. It's Wen Wing. Go Wen Wing. Say it, the ego. The ego. One thing left. Yeah, huh? Anyone else? Huh? So, are you telling me that death is not such a good answer? Huh? No one said death. You notice that? No one. See that? Even Helen didn't say death. Helen says, tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> huh? At JMT. Hope만 남아 있습니다. 호흡 숨 호흡 숨 쉬고 숨 쉬고 들이마시고. Only breath. Breath. One breath. Okay. Very good. One breath. Okay. Anyone else? That one breath is better than death. Let's face it, huh? Enlightenment is better than death. What are you monk doing talking about death? Huh? But the emperor is, is biased. Whatever this guy says, he would say, oh, this is so great, I love it. Come here, boy. Let me pat your head. Pat, pat on the head. Anyone else? Hmm? That's it? That's all? That's all you're willing to say? Yes, nine. Master, it seems to me that if the emperor is that enamored of this answer and wants him to sit next to him, he has an opening. Can't an opening. To share about cultivation and about his Mayana journey. I mean, I imagine that could be like chat over lunch kind of thing. <laughs> you know? And I'm wondering, you know, I guess we'll never know if he actually took that opportunity. I guess so, yeah. So opportuni op opportunity is your word. <laughs> okay. Anyone else?
GF. I'm waiting for my son. I, I think this story is a really sad story. Uh, I have heard so many stories, but uh, I think this one is one of the saddest one. Uh, the monk left India with a very high motivation and mission and came to China and somehow ended up uh, next to the emperor for 30 years. And the emperor talked to uh, his uh, people, uh, planning something and discuss something, before asking the monk and see how his reaction, meaning that uh, uh, he, he, he doesn't have much respect for the monk. And uh, uh, living next to the monk and invite him to uh, speak uh, uh, Dharma or explain Sutra for him uh, for 30 years. But inside him, uh, he, 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 he doesn't have any respect for the, for the monk. Uh, just see how he reacts and how, he, uh, how the, the monk explain things and see it as um, like, um, how can I say that? Uh, uh, some uh, some good uh, story to hear for amusement, and 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 uh, on the other side, the, the Mahayana monk uh, um, lived near the emperor for thirty years and uh, doesn't know that the other guy doesn't have any re any respect uh, uh, for him, and he still stayed there for for you know three decades. I think it's really really sad. Yeah. Uh, so your word would be? <laughs> it's very sad. I don't sad? Know. Yes. Sad. Your word is sad. Yes. Can I paraphrase it for you? Your word should be, would be, respect. Yeah, respect. Yeah. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I, I, I never hear any uh, story. There's only one thing left. It would make sense for me. Uh, Guna Bhara should have said, the only thing that makes that would make sense to me is respect. Respect, yeah. Finally, I earned your respect. Yeah. Or not. Hmm? After all the years I've been here, I've been teaching you. Don't I final, finally get some respect from you? DTT. I could say that because the, the emperor was, was saying that he, the master always have very wise answers. And the master also said that he's been with the emperor for 30 years. His answer is in a way he's saying that even though I said a lot of wise things and I've been with you for 30 years, there's nothing left. There's nothing in that, nothing in what I said so far. That's what he means by and say the only thing exists is that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything. There's no you, no me, nobody. I, that's the way I interpret it. And your interpretation is better than his. If, it, if the, all he says is death, that means it's still death for you, for me. Okay? meaning that he still sees death. Listen, if he sees death for himself, he's basically saying that I am just an ordinary monk. If he sees death for the emperor, he's basically saying that Buddhism cannot help you with your death. Because that's all I see in you, death. Death. After 30 years you helping me, I see death. So I've been talking Dharma for, 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 to you for 30 years. I said, see death. That's my Dharma. I wish, and the emperor is, um, is impressed by that. Okay. And I'm glad that uh, Jung finally said, that, uh, said it. Because the Prime Minister Xiao didn't really respect him at all, did he? He dragged his war against his will. 
emperor didn't really respect him at all, right? He could basically, you know, he's like uh, maybe entertainment, maybe whatever. Maybe he used a trophy as the emperor has wisdom, care for his people, as he into intellectual pursuits or whatever. You know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he knows, he understands the principles and so forth and treats the scholars well, the people virtue well. And although the emperor is also only using him as a trophy. Okay? So it's, that's politics for you. And that's a one lesson that you, monks and nuns, need to learn from this, is that when you depend on others who are not enlightened, expect to be corrupted. That's the only way that the relationship can continue. You have to become corrected, corrupted for it to last. Agree or disagree? These people have high expectations. The emperors and the prime ministers, they expect the whole world out of you. They're going to want their ways. If you don't give it their ways, they will not. They will not tolerate you. He knew full well for 30 years. He's, he's not dumb. He's the one who can read people's minds, something. He says, like, he can, he can, uh, he can uh, understand ren, xiao ren, ren, uh, xiao ren yi. So he understands, at least on the surface, he understands people's psychology, people's will. Never mind he has any spiritual penetration, understand reading people's mind or not, that's nothing. But Master Shiva says, this guy is pretty savvy. He can understand psychology. Yeah? Okay, time is up. I'm sorry, we went over time again. Last night we went, we went overboard, okay? Uh, tonight again, I apologize to you. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll continue to learn from this wonderful story here. And it goes on and on here. And there's more. This is how wonderful. <laughs> you continue again. You know, this is, we went through like uh, close to 100 of these <laughs> slides. Thank you. Uh, we see you tomorrow night. Thank you, Helen.